Hi guys, we've been getting a lot of questions lately about our projects we've been working on in the past, particularly Boscos and the Kingswood Utes. So I'll just give you a little bit of a quick update. The Kingswoods we have put aside for now, mainly because we've got the Green Ute project on the go and I really wanted that one done and dusted before we got back into the old HG Ute projects. So they are exactly as we left them. The door that we were working on before is just over there, exactly as we left it. I haven't done anything more to it. It is ready to go as soon as we've got time that we can make some Kingswood videos. We'll get back into doing that door and get it finished off and that'll make its own little mini series in itself, that door, so that's fine. So that's sitting there. The car itself, I did jump ahead and start playing with the fender, mainly because I hadn't taken any of that through to YouTube. I made a wheel arch on the pull max. This is a tricky repair. It's one of those jobs, a few years ago, um, I think it was Waddington Street Rods over in um, Victoria, were making these wheel arches and they came on the market and they were quite sought after for a while, but then they came put a disclaimer on their advert saying that they'd only cover up any sort of comeback on them if they were fitted by a qualified panel beater. And then they took them off the market. And I think I'll leave this one for when we can do a video on it and I can talk about why it doesn't work that well. It's a difficult thing to get right and I don't have this one right. Now, I've done them in the past where I have made this section here and I've put them on at about halfway around this flat area in here, thinking that this being in the center of these two lines would make a good spot to weld it where it'd be quite stable. But because you're running such a long weld and we're always going to have to deal with a little bit of shrinkage on the weld, what it tends to do is pop the center of the fender out and it actually changes it by pulling the two ends in as well. So then you're gonna have door gap issues, you're gonna have wheel arch size issues and things like that. This time round, I made my repair section a bit deeper and I've welded it out here and I thought I had it pretty good. I'd actually sat it in place and made a lot of measurements. Where it is at the moment, I could grind this off and finish it and it would be fine for a car without a molding on it because I've got little differences in this width around here it's very difficult for our eyes to pick up that difference looking at it with nothing in between. This car's got the factory fitted chrome moulding around the wheel arch, which is really rare for a Kingswood, so I want to retain that. I want to keep it all as it was. As soon as you put the moulding on, we can spot straight away easily the differences between the edge of the moulding and this line here, and the same on the other side, the edge of the moulding and that line there. So what I will have to do, grind all this weld off, cut it all the way around again from there, let the metal relax, sit it all back in place and then I'll have to start fitting it basically inch by inch all the way around to make sure I have got exactly the right measurement all the way around so that when it goes back together the moulding fits. Now as I said a minute ago we get this problem with these big long welds with changing this dimension in here and the only accurate thing I have is the moulding so I'll have to work it until I reach that point where that moulding will just drop onto the fender and work right. So I will save that one for YouTube as well. And like I say, once we get the green ute sorted, which is now just tailgate the two front fenders and then we'll get in to paint it and it'll get wrapped up relatively quickly after that. But if we do get a break in the traffic, we will do some of these little Kingswood jobs as we go. Our white ute's exactly as it was left as well before. So we got the dash all finished off, the floor's all done inside it. Once it goes on the rotisserie, we'll get the bottom side of all that finished off and we'll bring you all that. Once I get the repairs finished on the subframe, it will need some realignment. And some of this may have to happen before I get these legs finished off on here because we're replacing the subframe leg. This one in here needs some rust repairs in it as well. Unless I can keep this hole intact and in the right spot, there will be some discrepancy with where it goes. All this area here being replaced, it's going to need to be realigned. Now, the original workshop manual gives us all the alignment specifications. So once we get that far, we'll walk you through all of that. And it'll be as, once you see how it's done, it is really quite simple. You've just got to have a level surface. I prefer to put it on a steel beam and measure up off that. And we just need to get this part accurate in relation to this part. We'll never be able to align our panels. Like we'll wind up with a door gap that's wide at the top or wide at the bottom or something like that. And we'll wind up with a car that wants to drive a bit funny if it's not aligned. So it is an important stage. Oh, boss goss. I've got the first door. I'll just shift this out the way. Okay. The 
metal work for the first door is pretty much sorted. I've got this reinforcing rail to go in the top of it and that's done. I will be working on it this week so we might do a little update towards the end of the week and see how far I've got. So that fits inside this door straight under this area here. So that spot there and this spot here are welded together with the hole through to make the window adjustments once it goes together. And I deliberately left this out so I could make the mirror image for the left hand side. So that's that one done there. The only thing I've got left to do now is put this reinforcing around here, a little guide in here where the cable's going to work for the door handle and naturally I've got the holes to cut and things like that to get it finished. So the left door's well underway. And sit. So it's basically just been making the mirror image for the driver's door to this one. So I've got as far as getting this recess in here. This point here is for one of the mounting bolts for the window regulator. That's another one and the other one goes down there. We've got provision for a radio speaker. This is where our glass adjustment hole goes. And this hole here's got to get made a little bit smaller and then I'll be replacing all this centre section like I did with the other one to match it up to fit the Mustang inside trims. So that's progress on old Boss Goss. Now, I haven't shared this with YouTube, I'll throw it out there now. I was off work this year for nearly seven weeks. I actually wrecked my shoulder a bit and um, had to have a little bit of remedial repair there. And so I did have a bit of time sitting around where I couldn't do much, but we managed to sort of fill in the gaps and keep YouTube ticking along all right. So if there was a gap between movies, well, that was part of the reason. So if there's a gap between progress on Boss Goss, that's part of the reason. So we did what we had to do to stay alive. Now I have found a little bit of time to play with my 34 Ford project and this has been the longest build of my life because I have been after one of these cars since before I started school. So this is a Johnny Cash car, it's a piece by piece, one piece at a time and I am just working from a handful of original pieces and the rest of the car is going to be in a, a replica. For people who have come in late, I am modifying the body dimensions a bit. A lot of people get confused when I say I'm not Americanizing this car. Now, for people who are not familiar with these, the Aussie 3334 Ford is unique in the world. We had our own body, our own body styles, and it doesn't line up to any of the other production cars around the world. So quite often, Aussies will talk about Americanizing a car, and that's inclined to make the doors longer so they run down to the running boards instead of having a gap underneath them making the doors longer and things like that to make them look more like the American production car. I'm going in between. Um, I'm quite tall, as you see, I'm well over six foot tall. These are quite small cars. The Aussie car's got a little short stubby front door on it. The American version has got a longer door, so I have increased the door gap out to the size of the American door, so it's another inch and a quarter longer than the Aussie. And I'm keeping the cab dimensions the same. I'm keeping the gap underneath the door to the running board, but I have made the quarter panel a little bit deeper just to soften the appearance of the car a little bit and change the sweep as it comes down under the door and flows through to the wheel arch. To get my inch and a quarter, I have shortened the window glass in here one inch. And then I have got this gutter line quarter of an inch further back on the curl of the roof here. Now I'm still working on this one. I want to get this side finished to the point where I've worked my way through it and I fully understand what I have to do. And we will make a video of making the other side start to finish. So I've got the other half of the piece of sheet that I cut off this one sitting in the back and it's ready to do the other side. I will make a hammer form to do the roll in here for the window opening. So if we look back to a window, it's got this rolled edge where it comes in and it hooks back on itself. I've done these before on Model A doors. It's quite easy to make a hammer form and actually form this around here. So I'm not worried about that piece. The really tricky stuff has been the gutter line. And bringing this out and bringing this edge far enough forward has been a lot of work. I'm still shrinking this area down here and I'm determined to do it without cutting it. I've run out of what my wheeling machine's capable of with the diameter and the radius of my lower anvils. So I'm just getting some more of those made now. And once they're done, I can keep going on this and bring this down a bit more. 
I've got to bring this line out. There's got to be more bulge in here, but I am at the point now where I need to go and get some templates off some other people's cars to get this shape accurate here, this shape in here accurate, and this line around here accurate. And then we can get into making the other side once we've got that sorted. Now, once I've made two windows, the back window naturally is going to be quite easy. And from there, I'll make doors to go with it. And they'll be unique and original individual pieces as well. Thanks everyone for watching. Thank you so much to all our subscribers and particularly everyone that's been supporting us for such a long time. We really appreciate it, guys. Love your comments. Keep it all coming and I'll catch you next time.